Hey people, it's Danny from Conscious Calisthenics here, back with another ex-vegan interview, which is with someone that was on a vegan diet for around two years that ran into multiple different health issues and various other issues on that diet long-term, just like many other vegans that find that they go downhill on this diet. And after being on it for around two years, started incorporating some meat, and then at another point, started trying a carnivore diet for a period of time so he did various different things of adding in animal products and it managed to help him go back into the direction of having optimal health and overcoming many of the different issues that are induced on a vegan diet so yeah thank you for joining us today and if you just want to just give your name to people and give a if you want to give a bit of a little extra introduction on yourself then feel free to do so yeah, so uh, thanks for having me. Uh, okay. My name's Jess. Um, you guys may have seen me from uh, Spearage's uh, ex-vegan video. Um, so a lot of what I say today will probably be similar to that. Um, but so yeah, I was vegan for two years and uh, I switched over um, and introduced meat again after that. And I guess we'll get into that more. But um, I guess to tell about myself, I'm a personal trainer. I live in uh, Northern Virginia. And um, yeah, I guess that's that's yeah, all it okay, is for me. Okay. I have, a wife, I have uh, several kids. Um, so that's kind of about me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, cool, man. So yeah, what was it that made you become aware of a vegan diet and make the choice to embark on a vegan diet in the first place? Hmm. Let's see. I think, uh, well, in, in 2012, after I, I became a personal trainer, um, I started, you know, after getting heavily into exercise and seeing the huge benefits in that, um, the natural next move was to explore diet and see, you know, what the deal was with diet, what the, the most efficient diet, the, the best diet to have. So I started getting into um, getting into some of like David Wolf stuff and introducing supplements that I may have been missing out on. And of course, once you get into David Wolf, you know, that leads you into some of these raw directions. So, and before going vegan, I was, you know, I was blending, I was adding in a lot of smoothies and that kind of thing. Um, like I said, getting into a bunch of these sort of exotic supplements like spirulina and stuff like yeah. this. Um, and uh, so I was doing just that, not vegan, for a couple of years. Uh, but I did switch to vegetarian. So soon after meeting my wife, um, she's a vegetarian. She's from India, and her her caste is the Brahmin caste, and they're sort of born and raised vegetarian. Uh, yeah. To me, this was like a very foreign concept. So, um, and you know, after we got married, she made the food, so it was very easy for me to just eat what she's making. It's like either I, you know, refuse what she's eating and make my own, or just, you know, eat what she's eating, and that that was a lot easier uh, to eat what she was cooking, and it tasted really good. So, so I went vegetarian for about two years. Um, that was, I believe that was from 2012 to 2014. And in 2014, um, at my, at the place where I was working, uh, a coworker of mine was a vegan and he was a good buddy of mine. And he sort of, um, introduced the idea to me. I believe, you know, this is, a, this is kind of a while ago. So yeah, some of this yeah. stuff is crazy, but I, I think that's, that's how I first sort of got introduced to it and decided to give it a try. So I, I went on the vegan diet in 2014 and I stayed on it with, I think there was one bump in between. Um, trying to think, cause I, so w when I was vegetarian, I went back to meat for a short time. I think it was okay. like for a month I went back to eating meat and in typical fashion of my own, I, I way overdid it. I ate a ton of meat and started getting 
changes in my body that I didn't like personally. So I went back to vegetarian again and then eventually tried vegan. And it was, you know, once you start down that rabbit hole, you just find these vegan channels all over the place on YouTube. And, you know, they're all, they're, they're all have, a lot of them look good. You know, they have good skin and they're, um, they're looking good and they sound good. And the idea is good. You know, it's an, it's a nice idea. Um, so I got really deep into it for those two years and I was off and on, I was sort of a, a normal cooked eating food vegan. And then I, I also experimented with the raw food okay. here and there. So like for a couple of months at a time, I would do raw food, just pure raw. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. So can you remember back to when you like started experimenting with meat for a while and you get quite a bit, can you remember like what the negative effects that you experienced during that time that then put you off of eating meat again? Yeah, at that time, uh, I, I started to eat it a lot, and I think I was eating a lot of chicken, I believe. Um, but I just noticed that I was eating a bunch of it, and it uh, it started to things became slow. Let's say, like I felt like um, I was putting on a lot of weight, weight that I didn't want. Um, and I, I don't know. I think, I think I was, I, it, I think I was, I still wanted to explore the vegetarian vegan, um, lifestyle more. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, cause I hadn't, at that point I hadn't tried veganism yet. I was, I had only tried vegetarian. So I went back to meat for like a month and it just felt like, it felt like too much, like too heavy. And let me let me give a little backstory. I mean, yeah. at that time in my life, I was, I had sort of before 2012 was a pretty rough period of my life. Uh, just in, in my college years, just horrible. Um, just no routine. Didn't take care of myself. Really damaged my health quite a bit with yeah. um, alcohol and certain drugs and just getting into that stuff way too hard. And so after 2012 and after meeting my wife, I was sort of on this purging mission of sorts. You know, I sort of wanted to erase what I had been doing for the past like yeah. 10 years. So I think just at that time in particular, I was really trying to shed a lot of stuff and the meat was heavy and it just kind of felt like I still have more to remove. It sounds a little crazy, yeah. I know, but I just felt like it was, it was not the right, I don't know. I just, I just recall just a little too much. Um, yeah. I mean like kind of heaviness in my body and, and everything else. It wasn't anything terribly negative to be honest yeah. with you at that time. It yeah. really wasn't. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. It just sounds like uh, I guess that it wasn't in alignment with where you're at on your journey and you'd been on vegetarianism exactly. for a while. You tried it. It didn't make you feel the best. And then you'd heard about veganism. So you were like, hmm, OK, let's maybe go down this yeah. road and see where this will take us. Yeah. Veganism was, you know, everything that everyone was preaching about it. It was the, the perfect diet, the best diet. You know, it, it made a lot of sense. In, in the journey that I was, that the kind of spiritual journey that I was d okay. diving deep into at that time. And so it, it aligned with a lot of the things I was reading about and things I was trying to practice on myself at that time. You know, I was reading like Eckhart Tolle books and getting uh, into meditation. And my wife is, um, like I said, she's from India. <clears throat> she's a yoga instructor and she does meditation and Reiki healing and a lot of this okay. sort of more spiritual stuff. So after meeting her, a lot of that was introduced to me. <clears throat> so I just kind of dove right into that and I tried to explore as deep into, you know, spirituality as I could. Yeah. And the vegan diet sort of 
felt like a natural path into that until yeah. I started dissolving and disintegrating. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, you <laughs> got into changed. so you got into it because yeah, it interests you possibly because you was a um, a fitness trainer, and then you also had the spiritual aspect. Did, did you sort of tend to believe from many different sources that it's like one of the more spiritual diets that you could eat, and maybe eating meat wasn't the most spiritual thing to do? Is that something that you came across in your journey? Well, cer certainly that lined up with it because you know. On a vegan diet, you're not essentially, ideally, you're not causing any harm to animals. But we all know that <laughs> that still is done on a vegan diet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the hardest, even if you try the hardest, you know, yeah. things, it, it's it's unavoidable, basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it, the vegan diet certainly spiritually aligns with, um, you know, ideas of compassion and you know and empathy and things like that and i mean believe me if i if i could have made it work on a vegan diet i would still be there right now 100 percent. yep i could agree because <laughs> it doesn't want to not harm everything you yeah. know i mean that's i think all of us would like to not cause any harm yeah to to everything on on the earth if we can yeah most of us at least. yeah maybe there's a percentage but yeah yeah, so it really, um, the vegan lifestyle, so for you, just as with many people, really hooked you in emotionally, uh, like fully. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, it did. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, so would you say that the vegan diet did benefit you at a point, but it just got to a point where it was just no longer serving you in a positive way and you needed to drop the vegan diet? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, it just became unsustainable. Uh, you know, everyone's heard it. It's you, you know, you're, you're on the vegan diet and you feel hungry all the time, and you're getting all these horrible symptoms. And they just tell you, "Oh, you're detoxing." That's that's all they say. That's <laughs> that's 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 how they convince you to just stay in the trap. It is just no, no, no. Relax. It's okay. You're detoxing. And it's like, meanwhile, you're like 40 pounds lighter than you were before. Oh, wow. Um, so I was, so, yeah, it it, um, it definitely became unsustainable. I mean, I felt there were things that were nice about it, like because of how light the vegan diet is, there was a certain mental clarity or clearness, I would say. I, I don't want to say mental clarity because, I mean, a lot of the, you know, the vegans are pretty, um, but, you know, there was a certain lightness to it that felt nice. And particularly the first, you know, I was only on it for two years, so it, it's not that long of a time to be on a vegan diet. I imagine if I were on it for 10, you know, things would have gotten really bad. Um, so, you know, the first year was, wasn't too bad, right? Because uh, I, I was still fresh on it and because it's the vegan diet you have to restrict so much of what you eat and you're not eating all the you know most of the processed foods you're not eating as much so that that's that is one thing that I'll say is kind of good about the vegan diet is it sort of pushes people into a it makes makes you become more health conscious you're really yeah. starting to think about what you're eating and you're starting to think when you're vegan, you have to know exactly what's in everything that you're eating, which is a, that's a really good habit to do. So, you know, there, there's, there are always positives and minuses to everything. So I guess one of the pros out of the vegan diet is that it makes people more food conscious, you know, yeah. um, they start paying attention a little bit more to what's going on. Uh, but then hopefully they have the self-awareness and humility to quit it when they realize that it's detrimental to their health. Yeah, for sure. And that is a really good point that you made that you removed a lot of the other crap from the diet. So would you say that you attributed all of the benefits you got on a vegan diet, it was just due to the vegan diet, or would you say a lot of the benefits you got was due to removing a lot of the crap from your diet that you've been eating consistently throughout your life? Yeah, I'd say, I'd say, yeah, definitely the huge, the biggest benefit was removing the crap out 
and eating natural foods, you know, yeah. eating, eating whole food. Yeah. Even if it is all plants, you know, at least it's from nature and it's, it's not tamed with, and it's, you know, it's, uh, you know, relatively chemical free. Um, so yeah, definitely. I mean, that, that's a huge part of it. No doubt about it. It's yeah. The removal of a lot of the process. And yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Unlike I'm sure you saw just when you start to listen to documentaries and people on YouTube, they say it's all due to the vegan diet being the best diet. And that's why people feel so <laughs> amazing for it, but they don't necessarily talk about yeah. that aspect. So it's good that you mentioned that. So other vegans that are possibly watching this can be aware of that. I think it's a very important thing that people need to know about for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, so when did it start to get to a point on your journey when your health started to go downhill? And like, like you said, did, so did you lose around did 40 pounds of weight? Did you say that happened for you and that you were having issues with feeling hungry all the time? Yeah, I was probably, I would say close to 40 pounds lighter than I am now. So maybe like 30, 35 pounds. So right now I'm about 180 and at that time I think I was 150 at maximum 150 okay so definitely a lot lighter yeah and, and, what and especially after the raw bouts of going like a month on just pure raw yeah or like there were sometimes I even experimented with you know the liquidarian just going pure blend pure liquids and that was a huge mistake <laughs> people at work were seriously concerned for my well-being yeah yeah for sure and what was your reasons behind trying things like the raw food because obviously you're on cooked vegan and then you tried like liquidarian raw vegan did you find it just you wasn't feeling the best on the vegan diet and you felt you needed to do some cleansing and purification to get rid of a lot of the things going on because you were told by the vegans that maybe this is why you're not feeling so good because you need to detox further or yeah i mean there was um i mean so the ve the vegan diet um, was kind of a big red pill for me in in a lot of ways. It was sort of a red pill um, for my whole view on the world because all of a sudden there was a a, a distrust in the establishment. You know, all of a sudden I realized that all this information that they've been spewing to us about diet is uh or a lot of it is not true and you know they're that that the you know the medical establishment is not there for our health and that yeah. kind of thing and so for a, a lot of for me i can't say i was pressured too hard by by the vegans they may have, they may have sparked some things in me but I am by nature, I am an, a, an explorer. I have to, yeah. whatever I'm getting into, I, I go very deep. And I, I find that a lot of the ex-vegans are like that actually. Yeah. <laughs> like we, we explore the extremes because nobody will do it. it. It's those that are afraid, you know, the ones that just continue to eat the sad diet, the, the American standard American diet. Um, you know, we're sort of the, the ones that are unafraid to explore the new territory. And so, um, yeah, I forgot where I was going with that. Yeah, okay, <laughs> so yeah, what other issues did you run into on the vegan diet that eventually, inevitably, led you to start reintroducing animal foods? Yeah, so I mean, I guess it was it was just over the course of those two years, the constant struggle of feeling satiated that was one of the biggest ones it's like you eat a meal and you're just never full no matter how much vegan food you eat like you're just you don't have that satiation that you remember before you went vegan. <laughs> yeah that that was that was probably the biggest one i i, I can't I, like i've seen the 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 videos of you know the the um spherages malnourishment vegans videos i never had anything that extreme i think yeah. because those people stuck to the vegan diet longer than i did um but i th that was probably the biggest one just uh always feeling hungry feeling weak all the time and you know i 
I had quit working out actually during my vegan. Wow. Um, and this is a person, I'm a personal trainer <laughs> and I stopped working out. <laughs> that's insane. Like yeah. that's absolutely insane. And I, and I like, I had literally convinced myself that I don't need to exercise during wow. the vegan diet. It's like, it was like, in my head, it was the thinking like, oh, it's somehow hurting my body. It's damaging my body somehow. It was insane. And uh, so, yeah, that was a big part of it. And uh, I guess one of the other symptoms, uh, I used to get congestion a lot at night on the vegan diet. Um, like before, when I would go to sleep, I, I would almost always be really congested and I couldn't figure it out. And um, that was a really annoying thing. Uh, I developed some allergies out of nowhere, like I was allergic to cats all of a sudden. I, I grew up with cats. I, we grew up with three cats in our house, never had a problem. And then uh, after we got our house here in Northern Virginia, we got a couple of kittens. Sure enough, I was severely allergic to them. And this was when I was vegan. And I have tested that after leaving the vegan diet, and I'm no longer allergic to them anymore. They have uh, no effect on me. That's really interesting. So. That's really that's really good that you mentioned that because I just add you just made me aware of something. I on the vegan diet always had itchy eyes when I would touch a cat, but I'd never experienced mm -hmm. that before in my life. So you just made me become aware of something I didn't realize that was an issue, and then went after not yeah. being vegan. Wow. That's really interesting. Yeah, um, it was the worst, dude. We, it, was, it was so bad. I tried to keep them around for like two months. We tried to keep them, uh, but it got so bad. I just couldn't stand it. And we had we sent, we sent we took them back to the SPCA. It's like the saddest day ever. I mean, I love cats. Yeah. I'm a big animal cat person. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, it, And that's the sad part of it. I was so delusioned by it that I didn't even see that it was the diet that was doing it. And instead of removing, perhaps altering my diet, uh, I got rid of the cats instead. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Terrible. and yeah, you said you ended up losing a lot of weight. Did you end up losing a lot of muscle as well? Because you obviously weren't yeah. able to work out. Yeah, all of it. I would be, I would, I mean, not all of it, obviously, but it felt like I lost almost all of my muscle yeah i had my body had atrophied an extreme amount after those two years wow. for sure yes it but really... you know, i was able to get it back relatively quickly i mean once once i started eating meat again my strength i i immediately felt the strength once i started okay uh, eating i would say animal products yeah once i started okay cool that. And yeah, like you said, you started to try different things like liquid dairy for short periods of time, which didn't go too well, raw veganism. Did you also try just find, like doing as much research as you possibly could to try and work out why you were not feeling good on the vegan diet, sort of patch yourself together? Did you try any supplementation, like taking B12 and try and like listen to vegan doctors maybe on YouTube and try and find the answers from your own experimentation? Yeah, I mean, I, I never did uh, the B12 uh, specifically. I I was taking spirulina, which is, which they say is high in B12. I don't know if that's true or not, but, um, but no, I never took like I know people do the shots and some other stuff like that, but uh, I never did the B12. Sorry. Um, uh, but I was doing uh, I was doing every supplement under the sun basically I mean it was, it was everything I could possibly uh, every extreme thing possible and some of the things were good I mean some some of the supplements were I think very helpful and I'll I if I weren't supplementing I, it probably would have been a lot worse I think if I weren't taking supplements yeah, which seems to be a common thing for many, many people. The people that seem to take the most yeah. supplements and the best supplements seem to last the longest and feel the best. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like 50% vegan food, 50% supplements. Yeah. Half yeah. and half. <laughs> yeah, so would you also just say, yeah, like, did you have any negative effects, like cognitively, do you feel that it affects your emotions in a negative way, or your digestion, or any other issues that you 
can possibly remember that you had uh, whilst vegan? No, I, I didn't notice anything with anything uh, necessarily bad with digestion um, or really cognitively. Uh, no, it. I can't. I can't. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. cool, man. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, what was the point where it, you were like, right, this isn't working for me, and I need to try something else? And like, did you just think, oh, meat will work, or did you listen to some people online that maybe saying the vegan diet isn't the best? Like, you know, what was your whole journey with that? So, I uh, in two thousand sixteen, uh, that July we went to India and we stayed in India for six months and it was there that I actually went back to eating animal products uh. and uh, I think uh, you know when you're vegan it, it gets really tiresome having to tell having to like be super picky all the time going to restaurants and telling them or asking you know oh does it have you know you got dairy in that and they look at you like you're some idiot, you know, <laughs> like that gets really, really old really fast. And um, so when we were in India, you know, India is a huge vegetarian population, massive. And they're probably the largest dairy consuming country in the world, I imagine. And dairy is very sacred to them. Yeah. Um, so when you're at restaurants there, and or or just in people's houses and you're refusing things like milk or like chai tea or yogurt or ghee yeah they, they do not take that lightly there <laughs> like, not to mention i'm already a, a, a tall white dude in the middle of india on top of that i'm this annoying vegan uh that's you know telling them not to put any dairy in my food so yeah that didn't that was not they didn't take that very well. So I I sort of like I sort of reached a boiling point in India where I was kind of I was just sort of done with it. I just felt like you know it, it was it was so restrictive. It was just a burden to everybody around me and uh, and a burden to myself. And so I the first uh, animal product food that I went back to was an Oreo milkshake <laughs> in India <laughs> because that's a very nostalgic I, I grew up like having yeah. those with my, that was like a very nostalgic thing for me I used to make them and so we were my wife and I were at a, a coffee cafe and I was just like you know what screw it like let me just I want an Oreo milkshake I'm gonna have it and even though it was like a you know processed not a great source of dairy. I, I I still felt a huge boost of something after that drink that I had never felt in the past two years. I mean, it was something very, very, very distinct to me that I felt. It was like it was like an instant shot of like nourishment. I felt like my body was getting nourishment all of a sudden, like a like warmth. You know, finally there's some warmth. Um, and so that was the that was what broke the seal, and then that night, I was like I was up all night basically, tr like going through in my head, okay I have like I have to try meat tomorrow because <laughs> this dairy felt so good, I I have to explore and see what the meat does for me. Yeah, so it opened Pandora's box and it really allowed you to feel free rather than in a box, which is like, must, yeah, it's such a freeing experience for you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was like breaking a, it was like breaking a cult. Yeah. It was like breaking <laughs> the cults, uh, um, you know, like it was breaking the shackles off. Yeah. I had to go through so much vegan brainwashing in my head, so much vegan propaganda that I had built up and that night I just I had to break it and just say you know what I'm gonna I gotta go back to to meet and try it Wow! so that next day I, I went back to it and sure enough I felt much like the dairy I felt like an immediate strength boost from the meat the biggest thing with the meat I felt was like a heating it was like so much heat it was oh god like a huge sudden surge of heat and strength that I felt so from that day on, I, I was back on meat 
in theory. Yeah. That. Yeah. And I have heard that from some other people that feel they can't just go straight into meat or eggs. Like they have some sort of junky non-vegan food and they get the similar type of benefits. Like it's, even though there's a lot of like not the healthy stuff in it, it's still got some mm. things in there that was non-existent on a vegan diet whilst they're on it. So yeah, and then obviously you tried the meat and you got similar benefits as well. So it's, yeah, it's really interesting to hear someone else say that as well. Yeah. Mm. And what was the first bit of meat you fur like experimented with? Yeah, again, that wasn't not a great source. Um, I think it was a it was out of desperation. I think it was like a I think it was a McDonald's actually that we went to. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Now, mind you, we were in uh, a village in India that didn't have a lot of access to the the kind of, like the kind of healthy meats that we're looking. I mean, there were there were some, but it wasn't. Uh, it became a lot easier when we went to Goa. So when when I first went back to meet, we were in Bangalore, which is like south central India, and we were in a a, a village there that was primarily. Uh, vegetarian so finding the meat there was not as easy once we went to Goa there was a butcher uh, pretty close down the road from where we were staying and I was able to get uh, my chicken there after that point so yeah nice so yeah it sounds like for you just like many people you're like "Mm, okay I'll give this a go see what happens and you've got a significant benefit straight away so then I guess it sent you on this whole like oh okay this seems like a good experiment let's just see where this goes so yeah yeah it was nice I mean I, I kind of felt like I was getting my life back after eating the after bringing back the dairy and the meat it was like okay you know I experimented with all that stuff it's time to time to get everything back now time to get my strength you know yeah. Time to get my motivation. That was another big thing with the vegan diet that I, I that I'd forgotten about. Um, you know, it, it it I felt like it killed my motivation and my sort of my drive in life. Huh. It just made me very lethargic, and, and mainly because I just felt so weak. I just didn't want to do anything. Yeah. You know, it's like being sick. You just don't feel like doing anything. Yeah. When you're sick. Yeah, and, and like you said, so, like when you ate the meat it heat up, heated up your body which what normally happens to a lot of vegan is they get a down regulation of thyroid hormones and things like testosterone as well so then you say you got your drive back and that so it sounds like yeah you're finally getting the building blocks you needed so your thyroid could function optimally so you can have optimal body heat and then so you can have optimal hormone production because when testosterone goes up people don't know these dopamine levels go up when your dopamine levels are low you will have no motivation no drive it kills it flat mm. so it's amazing that it yeah worked for you that quickly just like many yeah. other people yeah i noticed that it was like an instant instantly i noticed it so. yeah cool. yeah so how so what what did the rest of your journey look like with eating animal foods and how did it progress you did you just keep noticing more and more benefits over time and what were the benefits that you noticed and what sort of direction did you take your diet in over a longer period of time yeah so after after that you know we came back from india went back to northern virginia and i just kind of laid low with diet stuff after the whole vegan experience you know it was kind of like all right let's let's take it easy on the experimenting with diet i need to focus on my job i need to focus on my family and things like this Uh. so so i just sort of you know i i reintroduced i was eating meat and not not a lot i was maybe eating maybe one serving of meat a day and you know maybe some milk here and there um it was a relatively balanced diet at that point uh and so i kept doing that um through all of 2017 and a lot of 2018 and then in 2018 is when i went i experimented with carnivore uh, because i've been following uh spirage and uh yeah i thought i'd give that a go at that point and see see how that felt <laughs> yeah yeah interesting 
And and what was your reason behind wanting to try out what Suriridge was like recommending to people? Did did you feel that you're fitting good with what you're doing, but you felt that you weren't necessarily at a point of optimal health where you were thriving holistically? Not not necessarily. I mean, I, I felt great. I mean, yeah. everything felt fine. It it I think it was more like a curiosity thing than okay. anything else. It's like it was like much like how the vegan diet was it was like okay well here's a diet that people are touting as being really good let me try it out let me see what it's all about you know and that's kind of my drive to a lot of things i mean i i i I don't i don't just take people's word for it i have to i need to try it and see for myself yeah yeah and I, i recommend everyone do that oh yeah for sure, keep as I say to people, keep your mind open to everything, attach to nothing. Don't believe that you know everything. Don't believe you know what you're doing is the best thing, and always be willing to experiment. So it's really good that you're able to keep that open mind. And something that was really good that you mentioned is finally you got to a point where you didn't have to just focus upon diet for a period of time. It was just like you started focusing on more important things in life that were really, really necessary for you to have the best experience possible and the best connection with your loved ones as well, which is makes you more balanced it sounds yeah for sure it, it, it was it was something uh it was it was nice to get back to that stuff you know when you're when you're in in that vegan uh time period it's like kind of like being in a cloud it's really <laughs> foggy <laughs> you can't see very well um you can't think very well outside of the vegan bubble yeah. So once that was popped, it was, it was kind of like, okay, let's start, let's start being a balanced person again instead yeah. of this. Kind yeah, of nice. Stream, you know, crazy <laughs> person. <laughs> yeah. So when you switch to the carnivore diet, what type of carnivore diet did you switch to? Is it raw carnivore, cooked carnivore? Like, yeah, because well, there's many different people that do different things, and it'd be good for people to wear what you're doing specifically. Yeah. Yeah, so with the carnivore, um, it was mainly cooked, uh, and uh, and I was doing mainly uh, steak was what I was doing mainly. Okay. Uh, I was getting it from some, I think it was butcher box or some some kind of service that that sent it that sent me, uh, you know, some USDA organic meat or something like that. So, you know, I tried to get as it, all, all the carnivore stuff that I got, I tried to get it as high as high quality as I could. Yeah. At that time, I was in Colorado. Um, and so, you know, we just, we were getting stuff from Whole Foods and uh, some of the other grocery stores around there. Um, but I was eating, so it was mostly... Um, the steaks, and then I was eating eggs in the morning that I would cook. I, I didn't do raw. I think I tried the raw eggs once. I just I couldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know how Spirage does that, or I don't know if you do that too. But <laughs> I don't know how you guys do it. Uh, that was that was a tough one for me. <clears throat> so I didn't get into the the raw eggs. There was a short time where I was doing raw meat. Okay. And I tried eating it that way there was something nice to that um because i didn't like all the carcinogens that you get when you're cooking it i don't know you know if it's blackened at all or something. and and it, you know it, there was something nice about just the meat being in its fresh just natural state yeah. uh, rather than making it brown and whatnot um so i tried that I just couldn't, I don't know, it may have been an issue with quality of meat, um, but I couldn't, I just couldn't get behind that. It would take me so long to finish, like, one thing of steak, and I honestly didn't feel as satiated afterwards as I really wanted to, as I was expecting to, and at that time, I was not doing many carbs. I know later on in my carnivore experience, I started adding in some carbs I started adding in potatoes uh, with with my lunches and dinners or just my lunch I think yeah I also had potatoes in the morning with uh, eggs um, but I did 
I did stick with, so aside from the, well, let's see, I'm trying to think whether I did do only pure carnivore. I think I did do only pure carnivore, and then I started adding in potatoes, and I started eating salads as well at a certain point. Um, but I was eating a lot of meat. I mean, that was, meat was, I was eating two of the steaks, two steaks a day, <clears throat> and then eggs on top of that, and I was drinking a lot of milk, a lot of whole milk. Okay. Uh, organic. Um, and I, I put on a lot of weight at that time. I was heavier than I am now. And I had gotten really sick uh, in, I think it was January or February of uh, 2019. Really sick. One of the sickest I've ever gotten. And I was sick for about a month straight. Um, it was bad. And I, I don't know how much of it had to do with the diet. I don't know how much of it had to do with uh, being in Colorado. So I don't know if you've been to Colorado or places yeah. like that, but the altitude is so high that it is the air, everything's so dry there. It's like a desert basically. Uh. And that dry air was, was affecting us horribly. Uh, my, my son, my youngest son was breaking out with skin rashes all over. Um, our bodies were just drying up, shriveling up. And it, it had a noticeable difference on our health for sure. Just, just being there okay. in Colorado. So I imagine the the large amount of that sickness had to do with being in Colorado specifically. And I'm not saying Colorado is like a bad place to be, but when you're used to and when you're born in East Coast where it's super humid uh, and you've been there all your life and then all of a sudden you're in somewhere like Colorado, it, it it's a pretty rough adjustment for the body. Yeah. Um, so it was that and maybe coupled with I, 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 so at the time I was also supplementing a lot. I was, because I was on the carnivore diet, I was putting all this weight. I was lifting the heaviest I had ever lifted. Oh, wow. So my strength was through the roof. Now, at the same time, I will say I was doing some supplements then that I don't do currently. Yeah. Um, so I was doing creatine, I was doing whey protein, I was doing a couple others that I had never heard of before. Um, they're not, they weren't any kind of steroid in or anything like that. But I know that I was taking a lot of white powders that I probably shouldn't have been doing. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think that may have also played into it. Yeah. Um, but after getting sick like that, I dropped the carnivore diet and I sort of, I, I wanted to kind of detox that a little bit and just get rid of the heaviness because I felt like I was way too heavy and my body fat was way too high at that time too. Okay. Um, so after that, I went back to kind of the normal diet again where I was just, I was eating some meat. I was just doing one, one chicken breast a day uh, for lunch and I was still eating, you know, eating some dairy, but I was, I, I had added in more of the um, plant foods at that, at that time. Okay, and when you made that switch, did you also remove like the whey protein and all the supplements that you started taking as well, yeah? Yeah, so naturally I started to feel better for yeah. sure. So I got rid of all the supplements and I, I, I wasn't doing the carnivore anymore and I sort of felt like I was kind of back to myself again. Was, yeah, so would you say you ended up, after you started to recover from this bit of sickness you had for a while, would you say that you switched more to what you would call an omnivore style type of diet? Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely omnivore, you know, eat, eating a little bit of everything yeah. for sure. Okay. So yeah, how long did that end up lasting for? Because I know you ended up switching to a, another different diet, a, a, a later point which you're on now. A big shocker, right? <laughs> We're all always switching diets yeah. all the time. Do you do you watch Vegetable Police at all? Yes. Do you watch him? Yeah. I mean, he's like the he's the poster boy for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> like we may not admit it, but we know we're all like that. We're all switching. We're all doing this. Oh, salt is good. Salt's not good. Oh, this is good. No, no, it's not gonna. Be. It's like we're we're all crazy, man. Like, <laughs> but so yeah, so. I, to no surprise, I switched it again, and uh, so that I was doing kind of a normal 
omnivore diet uh, up until last December. Okay. I think it was right before Christmas. I got sick, quite sick again. And now this one was different. Okay, this one was different. And I don't, I'm not saying it was, but it could have been the infamous <laughs> that I had at that time. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But it was something that I had that was unique. It was a sickness I, had, I hadn't really felt before. Um, and during that sickness, uh, I, I specifically recall getting this certain kind of nausea feeling in the bottom of my, in, in my stomach. It was this very kind of subtle nausea. And it took me back to when I had introduced meat in India. So when I first introduced meat in, in India again, I was going to a butcher, I was getting chicken. And mind you, he was killing live chickens there for me. To uh, and that was crazy. So I, I went from being vegan, to <laughs> like, a couple of weeks later, literally asking a dude to chop chickens' head, heads off, and give me their meat. And I was right in front of it when it was happening. So, uh, so when I went back to the meat in India, <clears throat> there was a period, like maybe after the first two weeks of introducing it again. There was a period where I started getting this slight nausea feeling in my stomach. And it was enough to where I felt like I had to like force myself to vomit or try to vomit to get yeah. rid of it. It was the same exact nausea feeling that I got and it's it was a unique one and it was the same one that I got during this last sickness that I had in December of 2019. And so I, w I linked that when I was sick last time. It was an immediately an immediate link to when I introduced meat uh, back in 2016. So, being the explorer that I am, I decided to try vegetarian for, again, basically, and remove the meat and see if that, you know, or see see what that would do, basically. And that's what I've been on since. Uh, yeah. I haven't eaten meat since uh, since that time, since December. And I would like to, so part of why I wanted to do this was to also talk about that the vegetarian diet that I've been on a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. and at least just tell people what my experience was with it, because this is this is what this whole movement is about, right? I mean, we we have to all explore the different ways and and see what works for each of us, and you know, I will say there is a part of me that wonders whether certain bodies respond to these different diets differently than other people. And there's one reason in particular I say that one of my train, one of my coworkers at the place that I train at, she's a trainer as well. She's been vegan for like, I think seven, eight years, something like that. And she has, she, she looks great. Like she looks really good. And it, I, I don't understand how she's doing it personally. I've asked her like what she does. You know, she takes, she takes, um, I think just some kind of plant protein. I think the Vega protein or something like that. And I'm not sure what other supplements. I don't think it's anything sketchy that she's taking. But she looks really good. And to me, that I, I just can't, I can't imagine that if I was vegan for eight years. Like I, I probably wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> like, yeah. I would be I would be in a serious mess right now. So I guess what I'm trying to say is I think everyone's bodies responds to things I mean, somewhat differently. I mean I think there's some kind of things that are the same for everybody, but you know, the fact that she can remain on a vegan diet for eight years and I couldn't is a bit of testament, I think, to how different bodies respond differently to different diets so yeah. I went into went vegetarian for experimental purposes and I was I mean I, I've been on guard ever since to remove it if it starts causing anything that I don't like yeah so much like because I, I mean like all of us ex-vegans I learned my lesson with the vegan diet you know if I start 
if my body starts withering away, if I start noticing things that are getting a lot worse, I will not hesitate. I have no, there's no, like, I have no eggs in this basket, you know, in the vegetarian basket. Uh, yeah. For me, it's purely experimental. And um, I will say that since I've been on it, uh, I haven't lost any weight. In fact, I've actually gained some weight while being on it. So I was eating, before this, I was eating like the kind of regular diet, right? I was doing meat for lunch and I was eating some dairy and I was, it was, also plant foods involved so a relatively balanced diet and i was kind of stuck at one i don't know 65 170 i couldn't get my way past there and uh for whatever reason when i went just the vegetarian it's been easier for me to put on weight and i've maintained my strength as well I, i i can say that i don't feel uh any weaker yeah after removing yeah. Now, I know that's not, you know, but that's my own personal experience yeah. so far with this. Yeah. Um, I, think, I don't know what would happen if I reintroduced meat again and see how that felt. Yeah. But at this time, I have no, you know, I feel good. Uh, I, I personally don't feel that I need it right now. Uh, if I start withering, then I definitely will yeah. bring it back in. Yeah, and it's really good for you to mention all of that because, like we said, not necessarily one diet fits all. And what may work mm. for someone at this point, you, we're forever changing, so it might not work for a person at other points. It sounds like for you and your experience, what you're saying, when you got on the vegan diet, a lot of it was like your head thinking it's the best diet because you've been brainwashed. But then you've got to a point where you've had this full like comeback round to vegetarianism where you've actually mm-hmm. become in tune with your body and you're listening to your body and you're becoming, yeah, the best person to know whether a diet is working for you rather than listening to outside people telling you that this is the best and this and that and that. And yeah, that's, that's yeah, it's, it's really good that you've, yeah, that you yeah, found that the no difference anymore. Like I'm not attached yeah. to the label anymore. It's like I could care less what my label is you yeah. know if 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 it was eating nothing but bananas all day that made me feel superhuman then i would do it you know i don't care what the label is yeah so it's for me it's just like it's removing the label and just experimenting and being honest with the experiment and yeah. what it's doing yeah and being fr- free from the dogma and the ideologies and the any programming and being outside of a box and not being part of religion or a cult or anything and just being a free thinker for yourself like yes yeah. it sounds that you've able to be able to throughout this whole journey be able to form a better relationship with your body and yourself throughout this and make more healthier choices based on that yeah 100 percent. and i i will say that the i i still stand though despite my co-worker being seemingly healthy on a vegan diet i still have strong warnings to those that are doing it uh and i do i mean adding i feel that for our human bodies at this point adding in some kind of animal product is crucial whether it is coming from dairy or meat something that is coming from an animal is critical for us Mm -hmm. i believe yeah, yeah, no, and I would completely agree with you as well. And like you said, your co-worker looks really good. And this is what can tend to happen when you look online. You can find this person, like right. Frank Medrano, Numai Delgado, John Venus. You can find many high-level athletes. You can watch Game Changers if you want. But it's like right. there is a lot of them that do look healthy, but it's such – did you start to maybe see, like myself, that it's such a small percentage of people that are actually thriving long-term? Yeah, and that that should tell everything that we need to know about it. The fact that such a small amount of people can possibly thrive on it should be very clear to us that that's not a sustainable diet for human beings. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, and a a diet that is so difficult to make work where it ends up consuming your life, like you said, and then you're not focused upon other more important things in life, yeah. Yeah, it was it was amazing when you're like the vegans are so funny and I'm, I'm sure you can remember when you were vegan it's like it consumes your every single second of every single day is like thinking about what you have to eat because, because you're literally starving 
Like you're literally starving yourself. And so it's like this constant, just you're in survival mode, like forever. It's, (laughs) it's just, it's such a, it's, it's a a horrible way to live. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, for sure. Yes. It's just so good to hear just like many other ex vegans that you managed to wake up to the reality. It wasn't working for you and you've been able to be the explorer, try out some things. Okay. That didn't work. This didn't work and found something that's working for you now. And it's like a really good message for people to hear what you said. You're not attached to what you're doing now. So if it's not working, I will switch it up because there's many people that can trade the vegan box for the carnivore box or the keto box or some other box and then they build an identity around it and it can be harder to let go due to your ego wanting yes. to stay attached to it so yeah it's yeah it's really good people, that you... people need to start being their own teachers we have to stop looking to other people to to, to find out what's best for us only we only our own selves is going to know what really is best for us yeah because it's our body like we know what we're feeling nobody else can possibly know what we're feeling inside of our own body yeah so people just need to stop searching for answers outside go inside yourself and that's where all the answers lie yeah literally and this seems to be a reoccurring theme of everyone that i keep talking to every ex-vegan keeps starting to realize this is yeah it's the best internal navigation system that you can have like your body like literally so yeah is there anything else that you think would be essential for people to hear from you that you haven't already shared in this interview uh i think that's about it i think i would i would maybe send one message about what's going on right now to people and i would just tell people to just do what I said before, go within, don't be afraid, don't listen to all the fear, stay calm, yeah, and we'll get through this, yeah. I think. Yeah, cool, that's a very good positive message and I couldn't agree more with you. Um, so yeah, we will end it there then. Thank you very much for joining us, man. Um, if anyone wanted to get in contact with you, is there any way they could get in contact with you, maybe if they wanted to ask some more questions or should they just leave some questions down below on this video? Yeah, I mean, uh, questions in the comments is fine, but uh, if they have any personal questions or, you know, they want to uh, c- direct me, contact me directly, they can email. Email is probably the best yeah, way. Yeah, okay, cool. I'll leave, uh, I'll leave that down below for people in case anyone wants to get in touch. Yeah, thank you for sharing your story and joining us today, man. We appreciate that Thank a you, lot. Dan. So, yeah. I- yeah, you're welcome, man. So, yeah, as always, people, if you're someone that someone that knows ex-vegans or you're an ex-vegan that haven't interviewed, let me know down below. Contact me if you want to be interviewed. Interview. Leave your comments, questions down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and enjoy the rest of your amazing day. So yeah, thank you.